Hello, I'm Dr. Martine Barons of the Applied Statistics and Risk Unit at the University of Warwick. Today we're joined by uh, Enrique Bonilla, who is working as a data scientist and will talk about his job to us today. Enrique, please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, well, uh, as you said, my name is Enrique Bonilla. I'm from Mexico and I currently live on Mexico. I have a bachelor's degree on applied mathematics and a master's degree in data science from the University of Edinburgh. Uh, I have uh, five years of working experience, uh, a little bit more. Um, I have worked for uh, marketing research projects, uh, data cleaning projects, software development, and uh, multiple areas of automatization and research. And particularly now I work with satellite image analysis. Uh, I work at Data Pop Alliance. It's an institute, a non-governmental non institution uh, founded by the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative, MIT Connection Science, and Overseas Development Institute. Uh, we work with uh, non-traditional data in particular, like satellite image analysis, Facebook data, mobility data, and to assess different um, risks and potential data biases around the world. That sounds extremely interesting. So when you start a new problem, how do you go about it? Well, uh, usually uh, my most important advice is to uh, start uh, asking questions to everyone around your team, not just other mathematicians but or, or statistics, but as well as uh, engineers, uh, collaborators, uh, political scientists, economists, business experts, and so on, so they can give you uh, a good feedback of what do they want to achieve? Uh, how uh, does the problem um, works? Uh, what are the potential uh, risks and um, potential biases that may occur? How the problem works and so on. Uh, this is like, I think the most important part of, of, of it because if you don't understand the context of the problem, everything you're going to do, it's going to uh, fail more, more probably. Then after you have all this uh, insight, uh, I recommend um, to take your time and download uh, all the tools that you are going to need for a particular project. Each project has its own particularity. Sometimes you need to work uh, with parallelization tools, with cloud providers. Uh, sometimes you just need to create like your local environment in your computer, uh, don't light appropriate libraries, code editor, and so on, uh, Git repositories. And then after you have to, after you have everything ready, uh, I've, I think the most important step is to start cleaning. Uh, there is like a saying among data scientists, like 80% of our work is, of our work is to clean the data. So take your time to do it and to explore the data, to know it well uh, before doing anything uh, like any uh, extravagant model or anything like complicated. You should know your data well, how your variables behave, if you have missing data, if you have duplicate data, because uh, how do your variables interact, uh, uh, make some visualizations and so on. Because if you don't do these, uh, like you are going to and not building like a black box model probably with mistakes because you you will uh, consider duplicate data uh, uh, outliers and so on that it's not uh, not good so so that's like the three steps i usually follow <laughs> wonderful that's very important isn't it and how important is replicability in your analysis what procedures or routines do you have to ensure computational replicability i, I think uh Replicability is like uh, very important because normally, uh, if you have a particular project, it's meant to be uh, replicated in your future uh, and among uh, other people that works around you. Also, normally the people who hire you wants to corroborate that you didn't make a mistake, because particularly in our work, we work uh, with different uh, like non-governmental and important institutions that are going to make a statement with these data. So if you made a mistake, uh, 
they are going to like have a bad publicity and that's like very dangerous. So it's very important to have all the tools, tools ready to to uh, replicate your data, uh, not only like like version your libraries or create a, a local environment, uh, but also there are like other tools like GitHub, which allow you to share the data, like Docker, if you want to be more sophisticated. Also, I particularly recommend talking to the uh, engineering team. They, uh, if, if you work with software developments, they have like really nice um, tools like uh, unitary tests or black box tests that helps you to make uh, replicable your work. And as a further step, I strongly recommend that your work is extremely clean. There are some uh, coding protocols that you can follow. For example, uh, like Hadley's recommendation style, PEP8 style guide for Python, uh, use a code editor. Normally a code editor uh, points you out when you have mistakes. This is like extremely important because even if you work uh, if your uh, code works perfectly, if someone does not understand it, he or she is going to throw it out. So I strongly recommend to to be very serious about uh, uh, like making your uh, code as clean as possible and simplify as possible. Work work with uh, functions and so on, not just like a big chunk of code that no one wants that, that everyone is going to be scared of. So it's really important to be really really clean. Excellent, that's really good advice. What would you say are the key benefits and challenges of teamwork? I think, uh, as kind of I mentioned previously, the key benefits is that you get uh, insight from different perspectives, uh, not just like uh, perspective for your model, but perspective of how uh, re the, the data works, how it's collected, uh, how uh, how people will understand your um, outputs. Like sometimes uh, you can think if you only talk with other statisticians or mathematicians, uh, they are used to like a very technological um, language. But if you talk outside from someone of, of, of that area, they say it's too complicated. Uh, and this is really important because um, uh, something that I've learned to working with uh, various non-governmental institutions is that they uh, the actions actually uh, become like possible if they understand it. If they don't understand it, they are not going to trust it. Uh, uh, and your model, even if it's better than your uh, like regular uh, like their uh, regular techniques, they are going to throw it out because it's not comprehensible. And some people may may be at risk. So so once the that's I think the benefits, uh, the challenges, I think um, in my five years uh, of experience is uh, first, you really have to let your ego go away. Uh, as uh, that's, uh, as someone who studied sciences, that's very common. Uh, like we, we, uh, we are used to, uh, like everyone around us says that we studied complicated stuff, uh, uh, and and then uh, you believe you, you know more than others. That that that's something that has happened to me. It's not like uh, someone uh, something I'm not guilty about. So it's very important to to hear others, not just state on your opinions. Sometimes even I, I we. Um, uh, I work close with farmers, uh, farmers which has, which has no studies, and they have a better idea that what you come, uh, yeah, that you may uh, come in mind with. So it's that that's a very good challenge, like to be um, as simple as possible and understand others. And then the other challenges is to uh, like make your logic uh, understandable, understandable by everyone. Like uh, you work with normally with uh, complicated models, and these complicated models, as I said previously, need to be understood by everyone. So you just uh, even if, if if you follow like all your statistics courses as what does you want, you have to have the intuition to explain these uh, complicated models to someone else in to everybody else in your team so that they. Uh, trust your work and can give you the proper feedback. So I say that's the two main challenges. Wonderful, thank you. So what role do ethics and reflection have 
uh, in the life of a professional data scientist? Well, uh, particularly as working in a non-governmental institution, I'll say that ethics is always the most important part. Uh, as uh, as I mentioned previously, um, we assess uh, like potential biases and risk in data, uh, and you know there is like you, you can have your model uh, built uh, to perfection and follow all the mathematical rules, but if you don't consider uh, which people is going to be benefit or 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 or, or affected by your decision, that's going to be like a really uh, big trouble because even if your work uh, if your code works perfectly, you may not consider like some important bias, uh, some important variables like gender, some important sample bias, uh, and like you made your uh, like your studies for uh, only like people in Europe, but you are going to um, develop this model so from for other places, uh, and they behave like really different, as well as. Uh, you know, like considering, uh, like in satellite image, for example, it's uh, like quite uh, frequently that some uh, like images you cannot obtain because of clouds. And then there are particular regions which are affected by clouds constantly. And when you do um, like a model and you do not consider that this population is not taken into account because uh, because of the clouds, then you are going to make a decision uh, which is going to affect that region and which is not uh, like being there. Also, it's very important to be private about your data and to, um, well, and to compare like the results with the, um, with the logic that uh, like every people working around knows knows uh, like how it's going to uh, affect everybody. So so yes, I say that uh, that it's people that is going to be affected by your model. Even in, if you work in a bank, if you work in in something simple uh, like with Facebook data, with Twitter data, there, are, there is people which do not have access to Facebook and Twitters. And and if you do your model uh, for the whole population, considering just it, uh, they are not going to be taken into account. So it's extremely important, uh, uh, and it's one of the major challenges that I think data scientists uh, are facing right now. That's very helpful indeed. So um, next question is, what is a good presentation? And does it make a difference whether you're pitching for work or presenting results or applying for a job? Uh, yes, uh, uh, well, I've been mentioning this quite a lot, but uh, the the work or the presentations you do have to be understandable by everyone. Like normally you think that uh, like some like simple stuff even can be like like really complicated for some people I, I have i have had troubles presenting like box plots and if you uh want to go like with uh some like uh more complicated concepts like variants uh, and confidence intervals there are some people which does not have this background and does not understand it so you have to consider uh that that your work has to be understandable but without uh making it simple so so all the complicated um like stuff you have developed you have to to again uh, at least make an explanation that it's quite deep intuitive for everyone also uh the presentation of your visual visualizations is quite important uh there are some way, better ways to present data than others like uh, or or even like putting the right title, putting the right ac access uh, names, all of this counts because it's going to affect um, if people understand you or not, and this will affect if you get hired. If this will affect if if you uh, get uh, like your model gets developed and, and so on. So, so presentation it's really important. Yes, yeah, so starting with thinking about your audience and what they need to understand from your, you know, from your presentation, what they need to get out of it is really important, isn't it? Yes, yes, sure. <laughs> so um, what are the key things you're looking for when you're hiring a graduate? Uh, well, uh, from 
again, uh, from my background and the works I have uh, previously worked on and I'm currently wor uh, working on, I think uh, creativity, it's a very important thing uh, just to, to be able to come with a solution. Sometimes you work uh, under pressure or you face ma like mathematical problems that are quite difficult that they don't even have like a, like a, an exact solution. So so you have to be quick thinking on how I can like uh, come around with it. Also, I think um, like willing to learn new stuff is really important, uh, particularly as a data scientist. I'm, I think that, that you end up uh, working not just with data or, or with models, you sometimes work with uh, like, um, like engineering tools, software tools, uh, and you don't get like to learn it this quite often. You need to learn a new uh, programming systems. Like I regularly work in Python and or R, but sometimes uh, I have to uh, learn uh, JavaScript and other languages that I didn't learn at, at college. So, so you need to be willing to do that because uh, it's the needs of the project. Uh, also, uh, uh, then uh, other thing that it's really important is to be motivated about your work. Uh, here in Data Pub Alliance, uh, we normally hire people which is interesting uh, um, on facing like ethical problems because uh, you want them to believe that uh, the work can be better with these solutions. And if you don't believe it, uh, you are not going to um, care about these problems and not going to take it seriously. And then we are going to have a lot of uh, problems. And finally, uh, we really uh, look forward uh, to hire uh, people with really strong ethics, which is honest, uh, even if he, he, like making mistakes, it's completely understandable. Uh, it happens to everyone, but you have to be honest, like, sorry, I couldn't do it on deadline. I need more time. It's easier to face like uh, like the problem of saying, could you give me like five more uh, days to finish these projects? Because I don't know, I have personal circumstances or the problem was too difficult than delivering something that is not finished uh, and everyone is going to uh, complain about it. And, and like in a bigger uh, pan panorama or problem, sometimes uh, this model is going to be developed and it's going to take decisions for people and these people is going to be uh, affected you can you can get even legal issues uh, if you are not uh, responsible and ethical about your your work that's a, a very long list of uh, very interesting um qualities that you're looking for in a graduate um <laughs> it's always the things that they they get taught at university or college is it so last yes. of all, what is the question I should have asked and haven't? I think um, an important, a, a really important question uh, that is left is um, like to ask to me if I enjoy working as a data scientist. Uh, I, I really do. Like uh, a lot of people uh, think that all the like interesting stuff goes away when you go out to do like apply stuff. Like you are you well in college uh, and university, you are used to uh, like doing research and coming to more abstract uh, stuff, and then you think that you are not going to like face this abstract stuff anymore because you are going to do like just. Excel uh, sheets and, and, and so on, but that's not true, uh, particularly in all the, the jobs I have had. Uh, there's been always something interesting, some, something nice to learn, not only from uh, the mathematic or a statistical point of view, but how the world, uh, the world uh, works. Uh, even, for example, when I, uh, I uh, work in, uh, in market research, I learn a lot about how uh, you buy products uh, and uh, like all the science and all the studies that have been done for that in, here in, in like in this uh, uh, working with non-governmental associations. I work, I, I've learned a lot about uh, like politics, 
how uh, decisions like big decisions are, are making, how data it's influenced these decisions, like how it's changing the world, and and that is amazing. So so really, I should say that that it's a, a really interesting uh, job. Also, uh, another question um, that I uh, I should have asked is uh, what type of problems do you solve regularly as a data scientist, and what like what kind of data do you handle? Uh, and I and I can say that it's been uh, like amazing to know all the type of data that exists. Like when I was like an undergraduate student, I thought that only um, like tabular data data exists. But then I came with uh, you know like streams data, like uh, images, like satellite uh, images, uh, text data, uh, and you start. Like wow, this is amazing! Like I even thought uh, it could be done so much stuff, uh, and not just like predicting models, but uh, uh, even doing visualizations can be like really interesting. So how can I visualize these uh, five variables that are really important? And you have to think through it. Yeah, it it's it's like a, a really really amazing job, uh, and I really don't regret to have uh, taken this path for my life. Thank you very much. Yes, that's very interesting. I remember having uh, a new friend and and this person was just absolutely fascinating, seemed to know an awful lot about a whole wide variety of things. And it turned out they'd spent their career doing statistical modeling. And so you have to learn about all the different aspects of the problem you're solving. And so he knew about airline schedules. He knew about medical stuff. He knew about so many different things. It was just very, very interesting person to talk to. So um, I don't think when we go out because socially we ever need to be <laughs> shamed of our of our job because we're actually very interesting people because we need we need to know a lot about a lot of different things, don't we? So anyway, Enrique, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today and for your time, um, particularly um, from a long way away from the UK. Uh, we do, really do appreciate it, and um, we look forward to to speaking to you another time, perhaps. Thank you. It's been uh, really much, uh, nice to talk to you, and I hope it it, it helps uh, your students to to be uh, happy and excited about data science. Thank you.